Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, what we're going to be doing is building out this image gallery using Django. So this is a simple little application where we're just adding in images here. We're storing them. We're going to be able to search images by category and then uh, just store these in our database here. So the reason why I'm making this course here is I had somebody ask me about uploading images into AWS S3 buckets. So what we're going to do here is we'll build out this application and then towards the end, we're actually going to upload these images into AWS S3 buckets. So Amazon Web Services. So if you're here just to see how to do that, where we can just upload to AWS, I'm going to have timestamps at the end of this video. So you can just go ahead and look at that and uh, you can just follow that section instead of building out this entire template because we're going to start from scratch here or at least almost from scratch. I do have a Django project already built out and then we're just going to start adding to it and customizing it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the product demo here really quick. So the first thing is uh, we just have images and we just have categories here. So it's a simple application. We can go to any one of these images. I can go to uh, the category of Dennis and Sulamitha. I can go ahead and look at the image. We have a description, go back here and we can go back to another image and view that. So we can filter these by category. So right now by default on the homepage, I am just opening up all the images, but if we go to travel here so we can see the category of travel for these two. So if I hit travel here, now we only see all the images under the category of travel. If I go to Dennis and Sulamitha, we just see myself and my wife here. If I go to food, we can see the food here. And then if I go to all, we can see all images. Now, if I go to add a photo here, we can actually add new photos. I can always go back. So let's go ahead and add a photo here. So the first thing is I'm just going to paste in a description. So we'll just go to lorem ipsum. We'll just get some dummy text here. Doesn't really matter what it is. We'll just take that, paste this in here and we can select a category. So if I select a category, let's say uh, we'll just do Dennis and Solomita and I can go ahead and choose an image for that. So if I go to my photos here and I'll provide you with these photos, if you want to use these, if you want to use your own, go ahead and do that. So we'll go into family here. So that's actually going to be under Dennis and Solomita. And let's grab this picture. So I like this picture. I want to upload it. We'll submit that. And there we go. So we have our picture. Now, if I filter that, we can see that here. Now, if I add a photo here without a category, so if we don't select a category, let's say we want to add in a new category. So I don't have to select a category at all. The image will just show up there under no categories. But if I want to create a new category, so let's see, let's just do what do I have here? So let's go into my photo library. I want to see what kind of categories. So let's do nature. So first let's upload an image here. We'll just upload this picture. This is from a family trip to Destin, Florida. So we'll just do travel here. So travels, let's submit that. And now we created a new category of travel here. So, oh, it looks like I already had that. So let me try that one more time. So let's go to add and then we'll go into photos. Uh, let's just do nature. So that's what I meant to do. Oh, that was supposed to be nature. So let's just grab this image now and let's just type in nature. So we don't have this as a category yet, but if I upload it, let's add in the description. If I submit this, there we go. Now we have a new category of nature with one image. So that's the entire application. Um, I'm always going to get requests for people to ask to build in login authentication, different things like that. If you want to do that, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to recommend you just put that in the comment section. And I want to ask you if you guys are willing to pay for a Udemy version of this. So if I do a Udemy course on this or on my own platform, I would be willing to put out the entire application, but I've built in authentication, search pagination so many times that uh, it just seems unnecessary to do this in one video. But if you feel like you would be willing to pay for the entire application, leave me a comment and maybe I'll build this out in a Udemy course and then put that up for like $10. So uh, just let me know and then I'll see if there's demand and I'll build it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just start building out the product. So I can go into uh, my text editor. So I built up or I just created a Django application. All I did was I did Django dash admin start project. So Django dash admin and then start project. So I just did that and I called this one photo share. So go ahead and create it, create your virtual environment if you want to use one. I already have it and I added it into my application. So if we go in here, we just see manage.py, all the default stuff. So I'm assuming you already know a little bit of Django. So go ahead, get things set up, build out your application. And now I just want to start from building out our app. So we have our project. That's the only command we've ran. And I want to go ahead and create our app. So 
inside of PhotoShare, so that's my application name or my project name, I wanna create my first app and I'm just gonna call this one Photos. So that's gonna be my app, we're only gonna have one. So let's just do python manage.py start app and we'll just call that Photos. So we'll create it, we'll connect it really quick. So now we have our app here with our models, views, and let's go ahead and create that. So we wanna connect that to my apps.py file. So we wanna connect that to photo config here. So I just wanna make sure my Django project knows about this. So we'll go into settings.py. Let's just do this. So we'll just do photos. So we're going into photos.apps. So into the apps.py file and we're going into photo config. So that's inside of our installed app. And I'm using VS Code, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set that by default. So now that we have our app, let's go ahead and create our URL routing system. So we wanna create our URLs, our views, and our templates. So we'll go into photo, or photos, not photo share. And in here, let's go ahead and create our templates first. So in our templates, I'm gonna store those in my app here. So we just need to create a folder called templates. And inside of templates, I wanna create another folder called photos. So whatever you called your app, I called mine photos. Let's go ahead and create that. So that's how Django requires you to do it if you're storing your templates in your app. So now inside of photos, I wanna create a few templates. So we'll go into photos, new, and this is gonna be a file. So we're just gonna call this one gallery.html. So let's just add that in. I wanna add in some text here. So we'll just do h3 and I'm just gonna say gallery. So I have a couple of shortcuts here. So if I change my tags here, let's say I change that to a div the closing tag auto completes. And if I save it and my formatting's off, it's gonna auto complete that too. So let's say my H3 tag is here and it's indented all the way to the right. So if I save it, it's gonna auto fill. So you'll notice that my indentation is gonna fix every time I save it. So that's our first template. The next one's gonna be add.html. So you wanna, you can call that whatever you want, but this is for our form when we create uh, a page here. So, or create a new image. So when we go to add fo photo, this is that page. So let's see, we'll go into add.html. I'm not gonna add anything in here yet. Let's close, let's just close this out. So I'll just minimize that. And the next template is gonna be my photo. So photo.html. So when we go to view a photo, and this is just a demo, so we will start from scratch. So when we go to view a photo, we wanna see it. So that's the demo here, and that's in photo.html. So we have our three templates. We have our gallery, which is the home page, the photo page, and the ad for the form. So let's go ahead and create the views now. So we'll go into our views and we just wanna render out these templates. So we'll just create a function-based view and I'm just gonna call the first one gallery. So that's gallery, we're gonna take in request. Then we'll just return the template. So we'll do return and that's gonna be render. We need to pass in request here. So throw in request and let's see, we'll just do uh, photos, that's the app name. So photos and then forward slash gallery.html. Okay, so now all I have to do is just copy and paste this. I'm gonna repeat this three more times and we'll customize the values. So this next one's gonna be for my photo. So we'll just do view photo and that's gonna go to photo.html. And then we also want, I need to put an own there. So then we just wanna do add photo. Okay, so this one's gonna be add.html. So now I just wanna configure my URLs here. So what I'm gonna do is create my URLs file here, and then we need to connect it in our root urls.py file. So we're gonna call this urls.py, and in here, we first need to import our path, uh, our path function. So we'll just do from django.urls import path, and let's go ahead and also import our view. So we'll just do from dot views or from dot import views. So we're just going back one file and it, we're, we're actually in the same file structure. So we're just gonna import that so we can import all the views and then we need to set our URL patterns. So URL patterns, set that right there and let's create the paths here. So we'll just do path. Our home page is gonna be our gallery. So we'll just do views dot gallery and then I'll just give this a name. So we'll just name that gallery here. And then we also need to add in a comma here. I'm gonna copy and paste this two more time and then, or two more times. And we need to add one for the photo. So we'll go into the photo 
and we're gonna get a photo by its ID. So we can use a slug field, an integer, uh, or just a string value. So I'm just gonna use a string and I'm gonna call that PK. So that's how we need to get that in the view. So if I go back to the view for my view photo, we're gonna pass in that primary key. So I call that PK right here. So we're just gonna get that right here. And let's go ahead and copy and paste the view name. So we'll just change that to views dot view photo. And this is gonna be photo for the name. Can't spell photo for some reason. So this next one, this is gonna be for adding an image. So we'll just do add here and that's gonna be add photo. And we'll just do uh, add for the name. Okay, so we have our views, we have our, or we have our URLs and our views, but we need to go back into, I just realized I have a comma right there that needs to be outside. And so do these right here. So let me just fix that. So we have our view and our views and our URLs here. And I just need to go back into my base application and connect those right here. So let's go ahead and add in the include method here. So this is inside of my Django project, so not in the app. So we can see photo share urls.py and then we have the new one that we created that's our urls.py. So we just need to point to this urls.py file and let that take care of everything. So we imported include here. So now all I have to do is just set that base URL. So we're gonna leave that as an empty string and we're just pointing to include and then we're going into photos.urls. So we're going into the photos app. We're going in here and going into the URLs. So let's add in that comma. Now when we send it to this file, this file right here is gonna take care of that URL routing. So let's start up our server and see what we have. So let's just make sure that was taken care of and we'll move on to the next section. So we can do run server. We don't have a database yet. We'll take care of that in a minute. So I'm gonna close out the demo and I'm gonna open up port 8000. So I just have that shortcut here. So we can see gallery, that's our homepage. If I go to, let's see, we'll just do photo and then the ID of three. So view photo got an unexpected argument. Let's see, what did I do here? So we'll go into photos, URLs here. So we have our string and our primary key. So if I save that, I just need to save the views in the URL file and I think that should do it. So there we go. We have nothing in there, but it's working. And if I just do add, that's also a path. So those are all complete now. So let's go back into our template and start building out the template itself. So for this, we are gonna use bootstrap here. So I don't wanna focus too much on styling. So let's go ahead and we'll add that in here. So in this template now, we're just gonna start by doing HTML and this should give me my boilerplate files here. So let's see, I don't know why that's not auto-completing. So let's just try HTML here. Okay, so there we go. We got our base files here. And in here, what I'm gonna do is just call this gallery. So this is the page here. We'll add that in. We have our meta tags here. And if it didn't auto-complete, just go ahead and write this out. We just have our basic HTML tag, our head tag, body, and the closing HTML tag. So let's go into Bootstrap. So just Google up Bootstrap here. So Bootstrap. And we're gonna use Bootstrap 5 here, but it doesn't really matter if you're using Bootstrap 4. They should still be the same. So Let's go ahead and go to Bootstrap. Let's grab this CSS CDN link right here. So that's a CSS. We're not needing the JavaScript. We wanna add that to our page. So we have the styling and we have access to all the Bootstrap classes and IDs. And after that, let's go ahead and start building out our template. So if we go to Bootstrap here, we wanna build out our layout. So we'll just start with that. So we can go to Bootstrap and then we'll go to layout. We'll just Google that up and it's gonna give us the grid system. So we'll go into our layout and we just wanna build out our container, our rows, and our columns. So if you're not familiar with Bootstrap, uh, this shouldn't be overcomplicated. You can take a look at the documentation, but I'm gonna go pretty slow, so it should be easy to follow. So all we did was add in this link. Now we have access to all the Bootstrap classes. So when we add in these classes, it's gonna give us the styling Bootstrap gives us. So in here, let's go ahead and go into our body. And the first thing I wanna do is add in our container. So we'll create a div here and inside of a, or for this first div, we'll just call this container. And we'll just leave it like that. So that's the only thing we need there. And then for our, or inside of our container, we wanna create a row. So we're gonna have two columns. We'll have that left column and the right column for the images. So we'll create our row and that's supposed to be a div. Sorry about that. So we'll create the div here. And the div is gonna be called row. So we'll just give that a class of row. And let's go ahead and create our columns now. So we'll create another div here. And this div is gonna have the class of call. 
dash MD. So for medium there, and we want to give it the width of our uh, three columns. So we want it to be smaller. We have a 12 column grid system. So this is going to take up three columns of that grid. So we have three right there and we will create another column here and I'm going to call this or I'm just going to give this the size of nine. So that is supposed to total to nine. So we just have our nav right here and we have our gallery. So I'll just add that in so we can see it. So gallery and if I save this now we can go back to our page. We'll go to the home page. Okay, so if we go here, now we see that left column and the right column. So let's start building out uh, this navigation right here. So for this, I'm just gonna go to Bootstrap here, and I'm just gonna keep Googling things up instead of navigating. Actually, let's see, I can go to Contents or Components, and we just wanna go to Card. Okay, so never mind, I can get that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a few of these, so we're actually gonna end up using a card like that, but if I can go in here, in this, so right here, so inside of our cards here, I wanna take this one. So I just wanna say gallery right here and then these will just be links. So I can just grab this code right here and we'll just customize this. So let's go back into our text editor and in here, inside of that navigation, let's go ahead and paste that code. So I'll create that separation. So right here we have our column that opens and closes right here. And we just pasted that code in right here. So we have our width, which I just wanna remove that. Uh, the card should already provide that and for the title I just want to say gallery so if I save this now we should be able to see that right here so if I refresh that there we go so let's actually add in some styling so we can't see this and um, that should be called not gallery but categories so categories okay so we have that and I'm gonna go to my body and I'm just gonna give it a class here and that's gonna be M dash we'll just do five so that stands for margin, and we're just giving it the amount of five right now. So if I refresh that, there we go. So let's go ahead and look that up really quick. So bootstrap spacing. I just wanna make sure you understand what's going on here. So these classes right here, if we add in M or P, so P is for padding, M is for margin, then we can do margin top with M dash T, M Y is gonna be margin top and bottom, and then the amount of padding or margin. So that's what we just did there. So let's go ahead and go back here and Let's continue here. So for the categories, um, I'm just gonna leave these. And I wanna leave these ones right here, but I do wanna add in an all link right here. So that's to view all of them, just like we saw in that demo. So if I go in here, I'm just gonna take one of these here, we'll copy and paste that, and we'll just say all. So I'll set that to all, and then we're just gonna output these ones dynamically. So let's go ahead and output our gallery here. So for our gallery, let's see, how do I want to do this? So I'll just wrap everything inside of a big card here. So we'll just create another div here. Actually, I don't want to do a card. I just want to output it in a row. So we'll just do div here and we'll close this off. So we'll just do class and we'll call that row. I need to take out that extra angle bracket right there. So we have our row and inside of the row, we're just going to dynamically output all of our photos. So these are going to be wrapped inside of a card. So we're just going to go ahead and create another div here. And I can probably just go ahead and actually pull that from Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and get that. So I wanna take this card right here. I like the style so I can have my image right here and then just the description, the link to the page or whatever we wanna add. So let's go ahead and just copy this. So pay attention to the URLs or where I'm at here. So just copy this and let's go ahead and paste that in here. If you wanna write it out, go ahead and do that. Uh, I just wanna remove the width right here and let's see, so for the images, let's go ahead and add in our own images. So we'll just say cat photos, so cat pictures, and we'll just take in, let's see. I'm not a cat person, it's just kind of funny to use these. It seems like everyone does this, so uh, let's go ahead and find a bigger image here. So we'll just take this one right here, open up the image, copy that URL, and let's paste that in for the source. So if I save that now, we should have a cat photo here, so if I, remove that right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we have our card and our photo of the cat. So I wanna make sure this doesn't take up the full screen. So let's go back in here and I'm just gonna give this a class for the image. So let's go into the image and I just wanna add in a class and I'm gonna call this one image thumbnail. So let's see, I can just take that out right here and we'll just say image dash thumbnail. And I'll put in the CSS right here. So let's just take that go up here and let's see. So I'll just paste that or I'll add this inside of head right here. 
and we'll just add in a style tag. So we'll just style this right, right inside here. We won't create our own style sheet. And let's see, so for image thumbnail, I just wanna make sure it doesn't overflow. So I just wanna give it a max height here. So we'll just set that to 200 pixels. Let's save that. So that should move it down. And for some reason, it's still overflowing. So let's go back in here and I just wanna wrap this inside of a column because we're just outputting the cards here but I wanna make sure that we're wrapping that in a column. So let's go ahead and create a div around this. So I'll just copy this right here and I'm gonna remove it. We'll create the new div. And for the styling here, I'm just gonna give that a class of call. So a column dash MD. And we just wanna make sure it has the width of four. So I think that's what's causing the overflow. So if I save that, there we go. So that looks a little bit better. So now I just wanna add in a button right here. So we wanna add in the category and the button. So in here, let's go ahead and add that in. So we'll just add in the button underneath our card body. So still inside of our card body, I can remove the text here and let's just say category. So we'll just do category and we'll just set this to pet right here or pets. And then underneath our category, let's go ahead and add in a link. So that's gonna be outside of our card body. So we'll just go ahead and add in a, a tag right here and we'll just say view. So we wanna view the photo and we wanna style this too, so we'll just give this a class of button here. So this is gonna be btn-btn-outline. So Bootstrap gives us a bunch of styling here. We'll just set that to outline. We wanna make sure it's a dark button. So we'll give it, give it the class of btn dark. And I also wanna make sure the button is small. So we'll do btn-sm and we'll just add in some margin. So M1. So that should give us a button here. Let's take a look at that. It doesn't link anywhere. So let's go ahead and create that link. Well, actually we'll create that link in a second once we actually make that page. Hey guys, so sorry for interrupting the video, but I left out one part here. So I noticed this at the end and we need to add in some space in here. So before you continue, go ahead and just add in my-2 for the class right here in our card. So this is in gallery.html. I'm just gonna take this clip, put it in so you can continue with the video. So if I save this and if I refresh it, we should see that space in here. So make sure you add that, don't forget about this. So let's go ahead and add in a couple of these. So I just wanna go ahead and copy and paste this, see how it looks here, and then eventually that'll be dynamic. So uh, for the category, I wanna change this to small. So make sure you actually replace the closing tag here, mine autocomplete. So I just wanna save that. And let's go ahead and take this column right here. So again, with Django, this will be dynamic. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste that, and then we'll change this. So if I refresh it, we should have multiple images. So let's see, oh, it looks like my server was off. So if I just go ahead and go back here, there we go. So we have our images here and now let's go ahead and create the photo page. So for the photo page, when I click on this, uh, we wanna link this to our photo page here. So we just need to add in an href. So we'll do href and we'll use our dynamic URLs here. So inside of our URL, we'll just do URL like that and the name of our URL path. So let's see, that was photo. So we just wanna use that name right there. So we'll just do photo. So photo like that. And we need to pass in the photo ID. So for now, we'll just pass that in uh, manually like that. So we'll just pass in the ID of five. So all of these will take me to that link. So if I click on this, let's see. So let's refresh that, click on the link. Oh, that was to the first one or the last one actually. So now we're taken to that page. So photo with the ID of five. So let's go ahead and update all of those really quick. It doesn't really matter, but I just wanna make sure that all the links work. So that's to the A tag. We'll add that in right here. And that should be good, or at least to most of them. So the first one is the one that I really care about. So that takes me to that page and let's go ahead and start styling this page. So for the photo page, I wanna go ahead and create my boilerplate files again, or my boilerplate HTML. So we'll go to photo.html, and let's start typing that out. For some reason, it's not auto-completing. So let's try that again, HTML sample. So I'll just get rid of main.js in my style sheet there, so we don't need it. And for the title, I'll just say photo. So we have that, we have our template here, and let's go ahead and create our container. So I wanna make sure for the body to add in that same margin. So we'll just add in class with a margin of five. And inside of the body, I just wanna create my container again. So we'll create the container and we'll just give this a class of container. 
Okay, so we have that and we want to create our row. So we'll just do another div here. Let's see, let's go back here. So div. And this is going to have the class of row. So we just want to make sure that all the content inside is centered. So we can just do justify dash content. So justify dash content dash center. So that's just going to center my content there. And in here, I just want to put everything inside of a column. So we'll just give it the class of call. So class, that's going to be call here. And we'll just let that be full width. So that's good here. And the first thing I want to do is create a back button. So I want to go back to my home page when we need to. So when we go to a view a page or a view a photo, we want to make sure we can automatically go back. So we'll just do go back here and let's add in the styling and the link. So for the styling, we'll just do BTN and then I can just do BTN dash dark. So I want to make sure that's a dark button and I want to set some margin to the top and bottom so we can do MY dash three. So let's create the link itself. So we'll just do href here and this is going back to my gallery. So I called that gallery so we can do URL and then gallery. So when I'm doing this for anybody that's newer to Django, I have to put that in double quotes and then this in a single quote. Otherwise, I'm going to have some issues or you can do single quote and double quote, but it just has to be a little bit different. So let's go in here. We'll go into photo so we can see go back. But for some reason, it's not styled. So BTN, BTN, dark and then MY. Why is that not working? So it's odd. Oh, I forgot to add in bootstrap here. So I need to add in the bootstrap CDN. So normally you can just create a template here. I'm not trying to go into that part of things. So we'll just add in our bootstrap CDN into my photo.html and that should do it. So now we have our container and our back button. So let's go ahead and output the actual image. So in here, we'll just still inside of our column. I just want to add in the image. So we'll create another div here. So we'll wrap that in a div and I just want to make sure to add some styling here. So I'll just add this in line. So we'll just do style and I'll just do height here and I'm going to set that to 90 viewports. So that's going to take up 90% of the screen and that's for making our image full height here or at least full height. So I want the image to inherit from the parent. So inside of that div, so we have the ID or we have the link to go back to the page. Then we have a div here and in here we're just going to create an image tag. So we'll just do image or image right here close this off and we'll just set source here and for the source let's just use this same image from our cat picture so we're just going to continue using this for now so we'll take that paste that in here and let's see so down here i also want a description so let's go ahead and add that underneath here so we'll just create a paragraph tag and that's still inside of the div so i want to keep that in here so let's see. So that's going to be right here in a paragraph tag and we'll just use one of these descriptions. So we'll go back here. Actually, we're just going to use lorem ipsum. So I'll just copy that right there and let's paste that in here. Okay. So let's view the page right now. See what we have so far. Okay. So we have our picture and it takes up way too much of the screen. So the picture is really big here. So I want to make sure to fix that. So let's go in here and let's add in some styling for the actual image. So I'm going to put in some inline styling. So we're still in the image tag It's just indented right here. So if I move that right here, we can see that that's next to it. So inside of this styling, let's just do max width here. And I want to set that to 100%. So I don't want it to always be 100%, but I want it to at least max out there if it is that big. And then we want to set a max height. So I don't want to force it to be tall, but I just want to give it the option. And that's going to be 100% of that div right here. So 100% of this viewport. So if I save this, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So we have that cat picture. Everything looks good so far. Um, if we add a picture that doesn't really fit inside of one of these, I also want to fix the styling here. So let's go back into our gallery here and let's see. So let's take in another cat picture. So we'll just do cat pics and I want to find a picture that is a different size here. So we'll just take in this one right here. Let's take in that image. We'll just do open image, a new tag or a new tab. So let's take one of these and we'll just paste that inside of gallery .html. So let's just replace one of these cat pictures. So let's just replace the first one 
change that right here, save it, and let's see. So you notice how the image is distorted. Uh, we want to fix that. So this is a simple fix. If we go into our text editor, so if we go back here, what I want to do is just create some styling for it. So I just want to give it a class here, or we actually have the class for our image thumbnail. So for this, all we can do is just do object fit, and we'll just do cover. So that just means it's going to cover it, but it's not going to, uh, it'll just crop the image where it needs to, but it's still going to show it. So we can see that cropped. It might not be the best for a thumbnail, but it's just a thumbnail. So it's not like it's the final picture. So if we go in here and view it, we're only going back to that original cat picture because that's all that was in there, but the image would show up in, in its full size. So we'll create the add to uh, or add a new photo page here in a second. We want to go ahead and build out our database and configure our static files so we're not having to use these images uh, from the internet. So before we do that, I just want to add in a button here. So let's go ahead and build that out. So underneath here, let's go ahead and find these links right here. So let's just do that. Let's see, I want to do that inside of this UL tag. So we'll just create the link right here. So we'll just add in another LI. So let's copy one of these, paste that right here. I want to remove the content inside and we're just going to create an A tag. So we'll just create that and let's just call that add photo. So this will take us to the ad page. So before we style it, let's create the link right here and we'll just set that URL here. So we'll do URL and that's going to be to add. So that's what I called it inside of my URLs.py file. So that's add. We're pointing to that page here and let's add in the styling. So for the styling, uh, let's just do BTN. So button here, BTN dash outline. So I want to make sure it's an outline button and that that's going to be BTN dash small. So BTN dash SM and something looks off here. BTN outline. I guess that's good. I don't know why it's doing that. So we have that. I want to add in some margin. So we'll do M one and let's save it and see what we have here. So if I refresh that, it's still not giving us a styling here. So let's see. Oh, and that needs to be BTN dark here. So we're not going to outline it. We're just, we'll just say dark. So BTN dark and then BTN small. So let's go back here. Still not showing up. Let's see. Oh, I see. That was supposed to be a class. That was, I don't know why I did styling. So I thought I was going to inline that. So there we go. So we have our button and let's see, do I want to make that full width? I can just do BTN block here. So let's just do BTN dash block, I think, and then dark. I think that's how to do that. Okay. Let's go to bootstrap really quick. So I just want to look that up. So we'll do, uh, go to bootstrap. We can go to buttons here. Okay. So buttons and how do I make that full width? So that's BTN and then we just do BTN block. So all I had to do was change that back to dark right here and I just removed class. And that's going to be BTN dash block. Okay, sorry about that. So let's go back in here. Let's check that out. Okay, so I think it's actually the list item that's not allowing me to do it because I keep looking at it and everything looks fine. So maybe that's the issue. So let's try that. Okay, so there we go. So that was a little bit annoying, but now we have it. And this page links us to the ad page, which we don't have yet. We'll build that out in a second. And we have our view page with our back button. So Let's go ahead and build out our database now. So we'll go into our models file. So we'll build this out and then we'll migrate it. So we'll go into photos here. So that's our app name inside of models.py. So in here, we're going to create two models. So the first one is going to be a category. So category, and this is going to take or inherit from models.model. So the model is going to be capital M right there. Let's go ahead and create that. And the only thing we need here is the name. So we'll just say models dot char field. So character field will set the max length. So we need this for character field. Uh, let's just do 100 here. So that's the max length. And let's see, I think I can just do null. We'll set that to false. So we don't want to allow this to be blank right here. And blank is going to be also false. So we just want to make sure that when we're saving it, that we always have a name in the form. So now, with that being said, let's return the string here. So we'll do underscore string and then we'll pass in self. Okay. So for the return value, 
uh, this is just going to be self.name. So we're just returning the name. And we also want a photo model. So this is going to be the actual photo and how we're going to store it. So we'll just change this to photo. And let's see. So for the photo model, uh, there's a few attributes here. So the first thing is I want to have a parent child relationship to my category. So we'll leave this right here. So for the name, we'll just change this to description. So description. And we just want to set that to uh, let's just do 500. So if somebody wants to leave a longer description, that's fine. We don't want to, we want to make sure that that's not blank. So we'll leave that there. And I want to set that relationship. So we'll just do category. And let's just change that right there. And this is going to be models dot foreign key. We want to set the relationship to a category. So we'll paste that in and then on delete. So on delete, uh, we just want to set this to null. So there's cascade. So that means if the category is deleted, uh, if we do cascade, that means all the photos that are related to that will be deleted, but we don't want to do that. We want to delete a category and still be okay with uh, that photo staying. So we'll just do uh, on delete and this is going to be models dot set null. So that means we're going to set the value of category in this photo to null, but we don't want to remove it. So we have that. And for the image, we're going to have to do something a little bit different here. So we're still going to need to configure our static files with this image to upload it in the right area. But for this, we're just going to do models dot image field. And let's see, we want to make sure we always have an image. So null is going to be set to false and then blank. When we submit our form, this also needs to be false. So we don't want to allow a user to submit anything without an image. Now, right away, we're going to get this issue. Let's see what's going on here. So, this issue occurs because we don't have a library called pillow. So pillow is just an image processing library that requires or that's required to do this. So before we do that, let's go ahead and set the name or the string value to description right here. So we'll just do description. I just want to make sure we set that. And before we actually migrate it, let's go ahead and install pillow. So I just want to look up pillow right now. So let's choose, let's just do Django and we'll just do pillow. And this is what it is right here. So go ahead and look up the documentation. It's just an image processing library and we can just run pip install pillow and it's going to take that error away. So let's go ahead and close out these cat pictures. We'll leave bootstrap open and in here. So I have my virtual environment on. So let's go ahead and install it here. So pip install pillow. Oh man, I had this issue before, so I don't want to resolve this in this video. So let's go ahead and uh, run it from my command prompt. So for some reason, I keep getting issues when I'm in VS code. So let's turn off our terminal right here. And I'm going to open up my Windows command prompt. So we'll just search that up here. We'll just do command. So I'll just drag this in here. It's going to be a little bit annoying because I have to go back and forth now. But uh, I just don't want to resolve that issue right now. It's been coming up a couple of times here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to CD into my application here. So don't worry about this. I just need a CD into desktop here and I called it what did I call the app here so photo share so CD and then we'll just do photo share okay so I need to turn on my virtual environment I call that my ENV and then we'll just activate that so scripts forward slash activate okay so now we're back and I can just do pip install pillow Okay, so now we're just running that from our command prompt. Pillow is installed. So if I go ahead and turn on my server now, so we'll do python manage.py and we'll just do run server. Let's see what we have here. So the issue should go away. So we have set null to true on a field where delete, the delete rule is occurring. So let's see, set null. What field is it telling us to apply this to? So category. So let's go into category. Let's see what's causing this. Oh, it just requires a null value. So, so because we're allowing on delete to be true right there, uh, we just want to set that. So we'll just do null. That should be true now. So I'll save that. And let's see. So now the issue goes away and we should be ready to complete this. So for description, um, I actually want to change this to a text field. So let's just do that. We don't want to do a character field. Let's just do text field so we're not limited to anything and that seems more appropriate. So I can get rid of all of this right now and we need to run our migration. So we have our two items here. So let's go ahead and turn off our server. I'll just do Python manage.py. So let me zoom in here if you can't see that. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. 
and that should be good. So python manage.py run server, or not run server, so we're just trying to do migration. So we haven't migrated our database yet, so manage.py make migrations. So that's gonna prep our database for the migrations, and that's supposed to be from manage.py make migrations. Okay, so we prepped our migrations. If we go back in here, we can see migrations. This is all prepping the database now. Now we actually need to migrate it. So when we migrate it, we're gonna create the database and add these tables right here. So let's just do Python. And that's manage.py migrate. Okay, so we're migrating the database. We created all the tables. We don't have a user and I wanna access the admin panel. So let's go ahead and create a user so we can access that right away. So we'll do python manage.py create super user. And we just want to run a few commands or we want to use the admin panel to add a few items to the database just to get things started. And then we'll actually create our own form to create some items here. So we'll just do Dennis at email.com. Okay, so I'll create my password. Repeat that again here. We created the password. Now we can run our server. So let's go ahead and run the server. We'll go into the admin panel. So if I go to the admin panel, we shouldn't have the models yet, so we need to register those, but we do wanna log in. So we'll just do forward slash admin. I have my user, the password should already be there. So we can't see our models yet. So we just created those, so we need to register them with the admin panel. So we'll go into admin.py. The first thing we wanna do is import the model. So we'll just do from our directory here, we'll just do from.models. And we just wanna import, let's see, we'll import photo and category. And then we just wanna register those. So admin.site.register. So we'll just register those and we'll just register the category. We'll do that first and then we'll just copy and paste that and we'll register the photo. So now if I register those, if I go back to the admin panel, we should see the photo in the category. Let's see, what's the issue here? Register. Is that supposed to be lowercase? I think that's supposed to be lowercase. Yeah, so register was misspelled. So that needs to be with a lowercase r. We'll fix that right there. Let's go back in here. Make sure the server's on. So run server again. Okay, and that should do it. So right now I can create my database objects here. So let's go ahead and create a few photos and I wanna show you where these get uploaded to before we update the static files here. So if I go into my photos here. We won't create a category yet. So we'll go in here and category is required at the moment. So let's go ahead and just change that really quick. So we'll go into my models here and category. We'll just do blank and that should be true. So we don't need a category. So we'll just do true here. And I think I need to rerun my migrations here. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. Add photo. Okay, so now we don't need one. So let's go ahead and choose an image. So I'll go ahead and grab one of these pictures. We'll grab nature right here. We'll add in a description. So I'll just throw in some text here. So before we update our files here or our static files, this image right here, by default, we don't tell it where to upload. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna just upload it into our Django project and we're just gonna see it right here. So we wanna upload it into a folder called static, but by default right now it's uploading in here until we fix that. So we'll go in here Let's open that up and let's create the image. So the database object was added and now we can see nature right here. So we just uploaded it into our project and we wanna change this. So later on this will be in our S3 buckets, but for now, let's just go ahead and remove this right now and let's configure our, uh, our static files here. So we'll go into our static files. So let's open that up. We'll go into uh, settings.py to configure the static files. So we can go into our project here, settings.py, and we wanna do that right here. So by default, we already have the static URL. So that's the URL path to go into our static files. And what we wanna do here is first add in media underscore URL. So this is where the URL path is gonna lead us to to upload any images here. So we'll just set that to images, and then we're gonna we can close that with the forward slash. So we'll wrap it just like our static, so that means to get an image from our project, we're gonna have to go into, let's say, pour 8000, then we'll just do images, and then let's say cat.png. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're just setting that. 
So let's go back in here and after our image URL, we wanna make sure to configure our static files directory. So we wanna let Django know where our static files are. So we'll just do static files. So static files underscore directory. So static file dirs. And this is just gonna be a list right here and we can set all the paths here. So for this, we already have a variable called base dir and that is up here. So we're just using base dir if you're using a newer version of Django. Uh, the old versions we used to use the os module so you can still use that but we can just set baster and we're going to point this to a folder called static so we don't have this folder yet so we need to create this and this is going to be inside of our application here so inside of our project so we'll just go ahead and create that right here so we'll create a new folder that's going to be called static and now we're going into the base directory so right here and we're pointing into static so that's going to tell us where all of our static files are now we also need to set something called media underscore root. So that needs to be root like that. And what media root does is here, it tells us, or what media root does here is it tells us where to upload user uploaded content. So in models.py, when we upload this right now, it doesn't know where to upload it. So we saw it upload right here. So we're just gonna tell it where to upload these files to. So if we go into settings.py, so let me close out a couple of these pages here. We'll open up settings.py. So for this, we're just gonna point it to the base directory. So we're saying go back in here and then go into a folder called static. So we're just saying go to static and then go into a folder called images. So we need to create that. So let's go into static here and let's create a new folder and we'll call this images. So now we're telling it upload media files into this folder. Now there is something called static root that we can configure. So we won't actually use this in here, but I just want to show you since we are working with static files. So static root, uh, there's a command called collect static and it basically bundles up all our static files into one folder when we're ready for production. So what's going to happen here is we want to send that to a folder called static files. So if we don't have this folder, it's just going to create it. And if we do, then it's going to take all of our static files and throw them in there. So the first thing I want to test out is media root. So let's go ahead and make sure our server is on. So we're running good here. Let's go ahead and upload a new image. So let's open up the text editor and we're gonna see the image upload into this folder now. So let's go in here, we'll go into that same photo and let's just add in another picture here. So we'll just use the same picture. We'll go to nature and before I save it, let's go ahead and see what happens. So let's make sure it's open here. And when we hit save, instead of adding it right here, we just added it to this image folder. So it found static and then it found images and we also needed our base dir right here or not base dir, but static files dir to let us know where our static files even exist. So that's not it. We still need to do a few other things here. So we wanna configure our static URLs here. So if we go into urls.py, so that's inside of PhotoShare, so inside of our project, we need to configure that. So if I wanna open up this image here, let's see where the path is right now. So currently we don't have any route to find it. So we're going into images and then the name right here, but we still can't find the image, right? So we set it right here and it should find that. So we need to configure our media URLs here with our urls.py file. So before we do that, let's go ahead and set this or make some imports. So we're just gonna do from django.urls and or not from URLs, but from conf here. So from config, let's import settings. So we want access to the settings.py file. So we just want to import that. And we also want to import a function called static. So we'll just do from django.conf.urls.static. So urls.static. And let's just import the static function. So this is how we can configure it. So we have these two and we're just going to add on to this URL pattern here. So Let's go ahead and do URL patterns and we can just append to that. So we'll just do plus equals here. We'll use that static function that we just imported. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and set that media URL here. So we're gonna tell it to look for this file path. So in here, inside of the static function, we can just do settings. So settings, and then we're going into media URL. So that's how we got that. We're pointing to this now. And we also need to let it know what folder to look into. So when we go to that route, we want to go to document. So document underscore root. And for the document here, we want to go into settings. So settings dot media 
underscore root. Okay, so what happened here is we use this URL here and we're letting it know that when we go to this path, go ahead and go into static root or media root. So let's see, did I say static? So media URL and media root. Go look in this folder and find our images in here. So we have that image and that should connect to here. So if I save this, let's go ahead and save it. And we can go ahead and actually go to this path now. And now we can see the image. So that's what that took care of for us here. So if we wanted to configure the rest of our static files, uh, what we could do is we could just continue on with this right here. We can just copy URL patterns and we can also add in static URL. So if we were using our CSS and JavaScript files, this is how we would find that path. So now we're going to static URL. We're taking this and we're telling it to look into our static root. So our static root right here. So static root, I promised you I'd show you that. So what happens here is if we run collect static, so this is when we're deploying the project, we're not doing this now, but we need to run a command called collect static. So this is what Django does in production. So if I do Python manage.py collect static, we're going to see a folder called static right here. So let's see. Okay, so static files right here, and it just created a folder with this name, and it took all of our files inside of static, so there's not that much now, and it added in the image, all the CSS and JavaScript for our admin panel, so all the styling for this admin panel right here. So it just bundled us up, and it took care of that for us. So now that we have that, we're ready to start adding in real images and rendering them out in our template. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're tired of these cat pictures, we want some real information here. So we'll create some images from our admin panel and then later on I'll create a form to actually do this so you can see how to do this from the front end. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So in here, let's go ahead and turn on our server. So we'll do Python manage.py run server and let's go ahead and output some data here. So we'll go into our admin panel and the first thing I wanna do in our admin panel is add in some categories. So let's go ahead and add in travel for one of the categories. So we can save that and now we have a category called travel. So I wanna output that in our template here. So instead of this dummy data right here, so currently we just have this right here and I told you we'd get rid of that. So let's go ahead and change this. So we'll go into our templates. So in our app right here, we'll go into templates, gallery here, and we need to pass in our categories into the template first from our view. So actually we'll go back into our views and let's go ahead and get all of our categories. So we'll just do from, dot model, so we need to query the data first. So we'll just do from models, import category, and let's also import the photo. So we have our database items here, so our models, and let's go ahead and just do categories. Okay, so categories, and that's gonna be set to category, and this is how we can query them. So category dot objects dot all. So we just wanna get all the categories and we wanna pass them into our template. So we just set a context dictionary here, so context, and that's gonna be set to categories and then we'll pass in the query set. So let's pass this into the template. So we need to add it in as a third parameter. So don't forget to do that. We'll pass it in here. And now in the template, we can go into gallery right here. And I just wanna get rid of all of these right here. So let's go ahead and first create a loop right here. So we'll just do uh, four category. So four category in categories. And as we're looping through that, we'll just do end four here. So end four, let's go ahead and output each category. So I'll just paste this one in here. I accidentally close that out. So let's go back to gallery. So I just wanna paste that in there and I wanna get rid of these right here. So our category, we just have the value of name right here. So we'll just do category dot name and output that. So we'll just go in here and now I can just do category. So category like that and then dot name. So now if I save that, we should see real categories here. So N4 didn't register this tag. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, and I forgot the percent symbol right there. So we just need to add that. Let's create some space here. Let's try that one more time. So four statements should have at least four words here. And we forgot in. So four category in categories. I was too focused on making sure to spell that right. And now we see all and then travel. So if I add in another category, let's just say food. So that's food like that. 
then we should see another category. So that looks good and we're taking care of that and we'll make these links later so we can actually filter those. So let's go ahead and output the images now. So we have, let's see, one photo here. So we wanna output that. So let's go into our photos and let's see. So that's gonna be down here. So I can get rid of all of these. So let's take in this first column, let's remove that. Let's remove the second one and we'll just keep one and then iterate over them. So. Let's see, so we have one column now. So that's gonna be one cat picture. And let's go ahead and query the database for these now. So we'll go ahead and do photos. So photos, and that's gonna be set to photo dot object. So objects dot all. So we're just getting all of those. So we'll pass in photo in here. We need to set the equal symbol. Throw that in right here. Okay, so we have our photos and now we can use those in the template. So we'll create a loop right here. So we'll just do for photo in photos. So for photo in photos. So the query set. And let's create that end for right here. So we have end for. And I also want to make sure that if we have no photos, we just say no photos. So we'll just do empty. So for some reason, we have no photos. Let's just output the text. We'll do that in an H3 tag and we'll just say no photos. So that's only if we have nothing in our query set. So no photos like that, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so let's see. So now once we're outputting our photos, I wanna actually output the photo data. So in here, we can change the source right here. So I can just do, or I can just get rid of that cat picture and we'll, use, we'll just use a double curly brace and we can just do photo. So we're, as we're looping through it, we're grabbing each photo we're grabbing the image uh, the image attribute. And as we output this, this is gonna be a little bit different than a normal attribute. So we can't just do dot image because that's gonna point us to the file. So I'll just show you what I mean by here or by that. So if I refresh that, we're still not seeing it. So we need to point to the image URL. So we're going to that URL path for the image. So now that I output it, I can go ahead and go to inspect right here and we can see the image and then that file path here. So what I want to do here is before we output all the images or before we add a few more, I want to be able to view this image. So if I go back here, if we go into the actual photo page here, we're just still seeing that cat. So we want to output the image description and the proper image that goes with that. So let's go into our photo here. So photo.html, we'll need to go to our views here and let's just take in this query set. So we want to change that to photo. And in here, we're just going to do get and then we wanna get it by the ID. So we're just gonna get that by the primary key and we wanna pass that into our template. So I'll just create the context dictionary like that. So we'll just do, uh, not context, but we'll just do photo. And then in here, we'll just do, we'll actually pass in the photo here. Okay, so before we can view the page now, we need to make sure that in our gallery, we're outputting the category and then linking up the photo. So let's just do, photo.category, so photo.category. And we can actually get the name of that category. So we can query up to that model right there and get the name. And then in here, we can just do photo.id. So that's how we know which ID to link to. So if I refresh this, we should see the category updated. So we don't have a category for this photo. So let's go ahead and add one. So in here, let's just add in uh, food here. So we'll save that. I guess travel is more appropriate. So we'll save travel and there we go. So we see travel. Now when I click on it, we get passed in the ID of one and we wanna change this image here. So in our views.py file, we query that, we pass that into the template. So we can go to photo.html and we need to do the same here. So we need to change this image and let me just zoom back in here. So we'll just do, um, I'm gonna use double quotes here. So we'll use the double quotes and we'll just do uh, URL, actually that's a, I just realized that's an image. So it's a, it's a photo here. So we can use the double curly braces and I'm just going to do photo dot image and we can just do the image URL. So for the description, I want to pass that in. So that's going to be photo dot description. Okay. So we have the description and we link back to the page and that's pretty much it for the photo page. So now we can see the photo. If we go here, we can see that that checks out. Let's add in another one. So we'll just do category. We'll set that back to travel and let's add in another travel picture. 
So we'll get this forest looking picture here and we'll just use lorem ipsum for the description. We'll paste that in right here, save that. So now if I go back here, we still see travel and we have our second picture. So when I click on this, now we're seeing the picture with a description. So up until now, we've been using the admin panel and we wanna do this from here. So we wanna see all of our photos. We'll add in search in a second here, but we wanna click this right here. We wanna do add photo and then actually add in the photo itself. So let's go ahead and build out that page now. So we can close out photo.html. I'll close out my URLs here. Uh, I guess I can leave my models open for now. So in here, we're gonna start working with this view here. So we need to send data here along with the image that we wanna to add to the database. So let's go in here and we'll go into add.html and let's see if my template or my tag right here works. So for some reason, when I'm typing this in, it wasn't giving me that. So we'll just do HTML and there we go. So I don't know what that issue is. I've been having a few issues today. So let's just do add photo for the title. And in here, I also wanna make sure I add bootstrap because we are gonna be using some bootstrap styling. So we'll go to this other page. Let's grab in that bootstrap CSS link right here. And let's see, so we'll just add that inside of my header tags. And the first thing I wanna do is add in some padding to the body here and we'll add in a container. So we'll just do class and that's gonna be M-5, we'll create some spacing here. And inside of the body itself here, let's go ahead and build this section out. So we wanna create a container. So we'll just do div here. So we'll create a div, give it the class of container. So I also wanna make sure that this is gonna be centered. So we'll just do justify dash content and that's gonna be center. Okay, so we have our container and inside of our container, we wanna create a column here. So let's see, I'll just create a row here. So we'll just do a div here, set that to row. And inside of this row, let's create another div and that's gonna be a column. And I wanna make sure that this form is small. So there's no reason to make this form full width of the page. So we're just gonna do column and we'll set that to medium and we'll give it four, uh, we'll take up four spaces here. So that's gonna be a pretty small uh, form here. So we have that and let's just see what we have here. So let's just do form, save that. And if I refresh that, now we're seeing it. So for some reason it didn't center that. So let's go back in here. So we have container, justify content, center. Maybe we don't need that row. So let's try getting rid of this. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so I see what I did here. Justify content was supposed to be on the row. So let's go ahead and add in that row again so I can remove that div. So the row opens and closes right here. We have the column here and I'm just gonna add in justify content to the row and not the container. So I can get rid of that right there. Let's save it and that should do it. Okay, so here we go and we just want the form in this section right here. So it's a small form. So let's go ahead and start building that out. So in here, inside of our column, the first thing I want is a back button. So we'll go into photo.html. We'll just take this back button here so it should be styled. And I'm just gonna paste that inside of my column here. So paste that in here, we'll see a back button. So when we create it, let's say we don't wanna actually build it out or we don't wanna add in a form or a, a photo, we can just go back here. So we have that and let's create the form here. So the form is gonna be inside of a bootstrap card. So we'll create a div here and we're just gonna give this a class of card. I can remove that angle bracket and let's just do card. So that's gonna give us some styling here and for the form itself, let's start creating that. So we'll just do form and this form right here, let's see, I think I could just go ahead and get a bootstrap form. So let's go ahead and find one here. So we'll just do bootstrap components here. So components and let's find a form. Okay, so let's see, we have a couple of forms here. So I want a drop down list and a couple of text inputs here. So I also want this field. So let's just do this. Let's take in this form right here. So the one with this uh, choose file option and let's just paste that in here. So we can get rid of those form tags, we'll paste over them and let's see what we have. So we have our first input fields here. So we have that. I also want a drop down select option. So let's see, uh, for those inside of my form, I have form group right here. So we're gonna wrap in every form group. I'm just gonna get rid of four right here. I don't need that. And let's just say upload image. So we'll just build this out step at, one step at a time. So we'll just do upload 
image here. The type is gonna be a file, form control, everything checks out, and I'm just gonna get rid of the ID here for now. Okay, so we have that field, and let's just copy and paste this right here. So we also wanna label for our text field. So for the input, we're just gonna say text here, and then for the class, I'll leave that as, let's see, so we'll just call this form control and not form file. And in here, we'll just say description. So this is gonna be the description itself. So description, I'll make sure that's a capital D for the label. And that field looks pretty good. So let's see, I also want some placeholder text. So we'll do placeholder. And this is gonna say, enter a description. Okay, so let's save that, see what we get. So we have that description right there. And let's just add in some margin to each field here. So let's just do MY here. So we wanna set uh, not margin top and bottom, but we'll just do margin all around. So we'll do M3 right there and we'll put that to the second one. So that should look a little bit better. Okay, so that looks good. So we wanna add in the drop down select option. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll just build this out by hand. So just underneath or just above our image upload field, let's go ahead and build this out. So I'm just gonna copy this right here. So let's copy this down here and let's change up the values here. So this is gonna be select a category. Okay, so select a category, and then the actual field itself, this is gonna be a select option. So we'll do select here. Uh, for the type, we don't need anything here. So what I'm gonna do is just change this to name. So the name is gonna be category. So let me just rewrite that, so category. And let's see, so for our placeholder, we don't need that. It's a select option here. We can get rid of this form control. Uh, we'll leave that in here and we wanna add in the actual options here. So for this, I just need to add in a closing tag. So we have our select field and to output our options here, let's go ahead and output the first one and then the rest will be done in a loop here. So we'll just do option, close that out here. And for this, the first one's gonna be select a category. So select a category, I don't know why I can't spell category, so I'll just copy and paste that. And the value itself, we wanna set this to none, so we don't need to set this, but the way I'm gonna handle things in the back end, uh, we're just gonna set that to none, and that's gonna be a string value, and then we're just gonna do select category, dot, dot, dot. And before I forget, we do wanna make sure to add in a name value to all of these fields, so this is gonna be description, and this is how we identify it in the back end, and then this one's gonna be image. Okay, so we have our category options. Let's make sure that that drop down field is working, but we don't have many options here. So I wanna make sure the category options are what we have right here. So let's go back into our view. And in our view, I'm just gonna take in categories right here. We'll add that to add photos. So let's fix that indentation here. And I'll just go ahead and take this context dictionary and we can just remove photos here. So we'll get rid of that. Let's add in context into the template here. And now that we have categories, we just wanna loop through and output all of those options here. So we'll just do, uh, let's see, let's create a for loop. So we'll just say for category in categories. So we're looping through the categories. Let's add in the end for here. So we'll just do end for to end the loop. And let's take in this option right here. We'll paste that in here. So we're just iterating through it and the value itself is gonna be the category ID. So we just wanna pass that in. So we'll just do category dot ID and that's what we're gonna to send to the back end. Now, as we select it, we do wanna see the category name. So we'll just do category dot name. So we're just outputting those and we're sending that to the back end. So let's see. So we'll go to add photos, we can see travel, food, and there we go. So everything looks pretty good so far. What I still need is my submit button here and I also need the option to select or to create my own category. So if I, for some reason, don't want to select one of these, uh, let's say we want a new category called family, I just wanna be able to create that. So let's take in this description right here. So let's take in that entire form group and I wanna paste that underneath my drop down select option. So we'll paste that here. So we'll just say, create a new category. So create a new category and in here, category, Let's see, so I always misspell that. And for the name itself, we'll just say category, and then this is gonna be underscore new. So in the back end, we need to look for this value, and then we'll just say create a new category. So for the placeholder. 
Okay, so now we should have that option that looks good. So let's go ahead and finish up this form by adding in the button and then setting up the form request type here. So in here, uh, what I want to do is just create a button here. So we'll just do button. So we'll create the button here and then the type is going to be a submit button. So when the form is submitted, this is the button we're looking for. So submit here and then let's go ahead and just say submit and give it some styling. So we'll just say submit here and then for the class, let's just do BTN and then BTN primary. So that's going to give us a, a blue color. So primary. And then after that, uh, let's just set it. Let's set some margin here. So we'll just set that to M3. Okay, so that looks good. And for the form itself here, we need to add in the values here. So the method here, we're sending a post request. So we're adding data to the database. So we'll set that to post and then action. Uh, because we're just going to send this to the same URL, we can leave this blank. So I could add in this URL here, but uh, by default, if we don't have anything in there, it's just going to send it to this page here. So we know where it sends now. So if I save this, now what we want to do is also send in some form data or not form data, but some files with it. So in a normal form, let's see, where's the top of my form? Let's create some spacing here. So in a normal form, we can just send it like this, but because we are going to send in that image, what I need to do is add that value in here. So we'll just set the ink type here. So we'll just do ink type. And this is going to be multi part form data. So multi part form data, just like that. So multi part forward slash form dash data. And now it's going to send the form fields with it along with that image field. So now in the back end, what I want to do is go ahead and get that data and then create it. And I need to add in some conditions here too. So we have our categories inside of add photo and underneath our categories once we get this data what i want to do is go ahead and check the request type so we're going to just create a condition here and we'll just do if request dot post or if we request dot method if this is a post method which we are sending a post request from the form so if the value is post let's go ahead and create an image here so before we do that we first want to get our data so our form data and this is going to be set to request dot post right here so we're going to the post request and Let's see. So we just want to set that value that's data and we also want to get the image. So we'll just do image here and this is going to be request dot files. So we're getting files and we want to know what file to get. So we're just going in and grabbing the image. So in our form, we sent this field right here or we're sending that with a name of image. So we need, we need to look for image here. So I'll save this too. Let's make sure to get that. So we have the data here and let's go ahead and just print this out for us to see what's happening here. So if I print out data, so print that out as a string and then the actual values and let's do this for image. So let's see, fix that indentation, add an image here and let's see what we get here. So I want to send this form data and I want to have my console opened up here. So let's go ahead and move this to the right here. Let's open this up here. So request.method equal to post. So it looks like I'm setting an assignment. So I need to do equals to like that. And that should fix it. So let's go ahead and send something. So if I move this to the right, let's send the data. So let's just type in some values here. Let's set travel, the category, upload an image, and let's hit submit. Okay, so it looks like it sent it as a get request. So I think we didn't refresh the page. So let's see our method here, that's post. So let's go ahead and just refresh the page and try that one more time. So we'll go back here, go to add photo, continue with this. And I want to actually make these fields required. So the description should be required. So we'll just do required here. And then for the, the image field here, we don't want a user to upload an image or submit this form without actually uploading the image itself. So I'll save that and then let's refresh that. So let's go back into here. Let's create something. So if I try to submit that without it, we should see this field is required and we'll just say new photo. Let's select a category. So we'll just set that to travel, choose an image. We'll do nature one, submit that. And it looks like we're missing a CSRF token right now. So we can't send a post request without a CSRF token. So let's add that CSRF underscore token. Okay, so now it should work. Let's see if I get any more issues here. So I'll just go back here, refresh that, add in some data. We'll just say new image, select a category, travel, add in nature, and let's submit that. So if we look at our request here, 
we can see that we're printing out first our data. So we get a query dict right here. We see our CSRF token. We see the value of the description, which is new image, our category, and that's just the ID of one. So that's the travel category. We're not creating a new category. So it's just an empty string. And then we see the actual image file. So we can go ahead and write a condition and create this now. So let's go back in here into our views. And the first thing I wanna do here is go ahead and check if we have our category set correctly. So we just wanna check our data. So we're just gonna look into, look into data. And remember, we send category. So we'll just check that. So we'll do category. So if category right here is not equal to none, so remember the default value right here, if we don't select a category, uh, that's gonna be none. So by default, we're sending the value of none. So that's a string value. We can't just use none like that. Uh, it's a string value like that. So we're checking it. If we don't have a category, then let's go ahead and, or if the category was selected, so the value is not none, then let's go ahead and find the category. So we'll just do category. So category, and we just want to query that. So we'll do category dot objects dot get, and we want to get it by the ID. So we'll just set the ID value and that's going to be set to data dot category. So we're passing in the ID. Now, if we don't have this, we'll just create an L if statement. So we'll just do L if. So if the category new value was sent, so let's say uh, the value is none, then we wanna go ahead and check this condition now. So we just wanna do data and we're gonna pull out category new. So that's how we sent it from the front end and that's the form field that we fill out manually. So we're gonna check category new. Then what we wanna do is we wanna see if category new is not an empty string. So if it's not an empty string, then what we want to do is go ahead and create a category here. So we can set the value to category. And because we're going to use the function get or create, we need to set the return value and then the created value, which is just going to be a true or false value. So don't let that confuse you if you haven't seen this yet. It's the same as assigning a variable, except for we need this extra value. Now in here, we're just going to do category dot objects dot get underscore or create. So what this is doing is it's going to look for the category with a certain value. If it doesn't have it, it's just going to go ahead and create it and add it to the database. So in here, we're going to look for a category that has the name of category new. So if that's in our database, then we will find it and add it. If it's not, we'll create it and then set the value to category. So all we're doing is setting the category or creating one. If we don't have any categories, now it's okay for an image not to be in a category. So we'll just say category, and that's gonna be set to none. So we'll set that to none, and that's it for that. So once we check the category, now we just wanna actually create the photo object here. So we'll just do photo, and that needs to be a lowercase f. So photo is set to photo.objects.create. So we wanna create that and we wanna set the category first. So that's why we had to query that. So remember in our models, we have a parent child relationship. So we just have to set this value. So we'll set the category to category. So it's either gonna be a category in the database, the newly created category, or just none. And that's okay if it's not a category. So after that, we wanna set our description. So we'll just do data. And then this is gonna be description. And I keep doing curly braces. So description. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I couldn't spell description there. So we have the description and then finally the image itself. So this is gonna be a file here. So we get that inside of image right here. We do request.files.get, we get the image and then we can set that. So let's go ahead and test this form out and this should be it for now. So before we actually test it, I wanna make sure that when we create a, full, uh, a photo here, so when we add a photo, we wanna be redirected back to our homepage. So to do that, all we have to do is go up here and at the top of our views file after render here, so from Django shortcuts, we'll just do redirect and we can just redirect to that page. So if it's a request dot post method, if everything went successfully, we'll just do return and then redirect. So for redirect, we just wanna send a user back to the gallery. So we'll just pass in the URL name here and let's refresh it and go back here. So we'll go back to the gallery. It looks like we have an issue. So let me just restart my server. It looks like it froze up there. Okay, so I can go back here 
and let's go ahead and add in a new photo. So right now what I want to do is add in a photo here. So we'll just say, let's actually just use lorem ipsum. I don't like leaving that blank. So lorem ipsum, we want to add something to food now. So we'll go into food. We don't want to create a new category. So we'll go into photos. And remember, you have all of these photos. I'm going to leave these in the GitHub repo. So let's grab in or let's grab this picture, submit that. And we just added it to the database. So we sent that data back here. We ran these conditions, we submitted it and it redirected us. So now if I go to view this picture, we can see that photo, we see the description and let's go ahead and add in a picture that doesn't have a category. So we want to add one without a category. So we'll just paste that. We won't select anything. We'll add in a new picture. Let's see. We'll just take something from the desktop here. I'll just take in this favicon looking picture, submit that. And now we have no category, but let's say we want to try submitting something that doesn't have a category yet, but we want to create one. So we'll just add in that dummy text. We'll go ahead and uh, write in a new category. So we have travel, food, and let's just do Sulamita and Dennis. So, and Dennis. So this is me and my wife. Let's say I want to upload a whole photo al album for that. So we'll go into photos here and that's currently under family. So I want to upload this, submit that. And there we go. So we have our new category. Now we can see that in here. So if I go back here, we'll paste in the description. Now we see Sulamita and Dennis. And let me just add in a new picture here. So there we go. And everything's looking pretty good. So before we move on to adding these photos into AWS, so they're currently stored right here inside of my static files. So we see them being uploaded and that looks good, but I want to start sending them to AWS. So before we do that, I want to make sure these search filters work right here. So let's go back into my gallery template here. So we can close out add.html, photo.html, and we'll go into gallery here. So in gallery, I want to make sure we can wrap these links or these right here inside of link tags here. So we'll just go in here and let's see. So that's my left column. So right here inside of this card called categories, let's go ahead and first get that all link right here. So in here, uh, we want to be able to reset the links themselves. So we'll just go ahead and wrap all here and we're going to put that inside of an A tag. So let's see, let's move this down here and we'll just say A, close that off. Let's just add that around it. So for the actual link here, so let's just do href here and let's point this to the home page here. So we're just going to point this to URL and I need to wrap that in quotes. So we just use double quotes here, wrap that, and we're going to URL and then the actual name is gallery. So this is the current page we're on and this is meant to just reset it. So if I go here, if we just refresh that and we'll fix that decoration or that styling right there. So we want to make sure that's black and no underline. So that just takes me to this page. Now for these right here, I want to send the user to the same page here. So I want to actually wrap this again and let's remove that extra quote right there. But what I want to do is I want to send in a get request with it. So I want to send in an extra parameter. So in here, I'll just paste that. Let's remove that closing tag, wrap that around the name. And for this, all we're going to do is after the URL here. So we're going to the gallery page. We're just going to add in a question mark. So that's going to be the get parameter right there. And let's see. So I just want to call this category. So we'll just do category. So category like that. And we'll set the value to the category name here. So we'll just do curly braces and in here we'll just paste in category dot name. Okay, so we're going to the URL, we're adding in this right here and then the name of the category itself. So let's just try that. So it's not going to filter it just yet. And let's see, what did I do wrong here? Oh, it looks like I messed up the actual link here. So let's see category name, close that a tag. Okay, so that looks better. Okay, so I'll just move that down here so we can see that it's wrapping it. And if I try that one more time, we should see the name now. So if I go to food, now we're seeing the same URL with the question marks, the get parameter category, and then food. If I go to Solomitha and Dennis, that looks good right there. We have travel and then all to reset it. So when we send this request, we're refreshing the page. So that means we're calling this view again. So this view right here, gallery, we're calling this. So we just want to customize this to actually get that data. So let's go ahead and add this in here. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to get that category. So we just want to do category. So category like that. And to get this, we're just going to do request. So request dot get. 
So I don't know why request looks funny. So I spelt it right, that looks good. I don't know why it's doing that. So we're going to the get request and from the get request, we wanna get the category itself. So we just wanna get the category as a string value. So we're sending this. So we wanna get whatever this value is and that's gonna be the value that we pass into it. So if I save this, let's go ahead and print it out and see what's going on here. So we'll just do category. We'll paste that in as a string value and then the actual value itself. So I'll save that. Let's go in here and let's try that one more time. So we'll just do travel. So we see category and we just see the string value. And then Dennis and Sulamita. So that's just Sulamita right now. Uh, that might give us a slight issue. Maybe I can make the categories in one value because it's calling that ampersand right there. So then we see food and travel. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we see none. So if I do all, we're not getting any data. So that's what we need to check for right here. So the first thing we wanna do is check if we have any data inside of categories. So let's write a condition here and I can just remove this right here. So I'll just get rid of that. And we'll just say if category, so if category is none, so if that's equal to none, then let's go ahead and return all the data. So we just wanna take this right here, we'll paste that, fix the indentation. Okay, so we just wanna get, get all the data here. So if we do have some get data, we just wanna write in our else statement and we wanna filter this data now. So let's just take in category, we'll paste that in right here. And for category, instead of getting all the data, we'll just do dot filter. And what we wanna do here is we wanna go ahead and filter it by the category name. So we'll just go into our category dot objects here. Okay, I just realized we did the wrong one here. So that looked funny to me. So we have our photos and we have our categories. So categories is still gonna be all. So we're just gonna add that above our photos. And what we'll do here is we'll add in the photos here. And then if we wanna get that data, and we have some parameters, we just wanna do dot filter like that. So the photos, not the categories. Now inside of filter, what we can do here is we can just go into the category. So we'll go into category. Remember the photo has the category as a parent. So what we can do is we can just do category, underscore, underscore, so double underscores right there. Then we'll go into the category name and we'll just do underscore, underscore again. And we'll just do I, or we'll just do contains. So if it contains the value that we send in the get request, then we just wanna go ahead and get that data. I mean, filter that data. So we'll just pass in category right there. And I think I can actually do this with equals. So we'll just do equals like that. So if the category name is equal to what we passed in the category or in the get request, then that should work. So let's try this. So if I go to travel, looks like it's not working. So let's try the contains method and we'll just try to fix this in a second. So let's just do uh, contains like that. We'll try this again. Oh, and it looks like I'm still querying all the photos here. So let's try that again. So I want to set that back to equals and that needs to be a single equals like that. And let's see this. So if I go to travel, now we see only travel here. If I go to food, we see the category is food. And if we go to all, we get all the data. So let's try Solomitha and Dennis. For some reason that's not working. I'm going to test that out in a second here, but What's happening here is as we send this get, get parameter right here, if we send none, the value itself back here is gonna be none right here. So we, if it's none, we just go ahead and return all the photos. If we do have a value for category in that get request, we go ahead and filter it by the category name. So I think the issue is because I have this ampersand right here. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we could write something in to limit that, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the category and I'm just gonna say, and like this. So let's just do Sulamitha and Dennis. That should fix it. So now if I go ahead and search that, we'll go to all Sulamitha and Dennis, and there we go. So that checks out. And that's how we add the photos, search the photos and filter them. And it's a pretty simple little application and it looks pretty neat. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. If you're ready to go ahead and move on to adding this to our AWS S3 buckets, go ahead and stick around. We're gonna take care of that in about, or I guess the next couple of minutes here. So. What I'm trying to do here is I wanna make sure that all of these images are uploading to AWS S3. So Django is not built to store static files in production. It's good for testing, but later on, we're either gonna to have to use a third-party package. Uh, one, we can use something called uh, white noise for that. So white noise takes care of static files for us, or we wanna store them completely separate when we upload this to a server. So if we put this up on Heroku, we don't want our static files being delivered from our Django application. 
So let's go ahead and just go to AWS. So I'm assuming if you're following this part, you already know what this is. So this is Amazon Web Services. If you don't have one, uh, if you don't have an account, go ahead and create one. Uh, you will need a card on file to use this, but we wanna use the S3 buckets uh, option here. So there's different services we can use and I'm gonna use the S3 bucket. So I'm just gonna log in here and we'll just go ahead and type in my information. So I'll probably blur that out here just in case. And we're going to S3 bucket. So go ahead and search it. So I already have it in my recently visited options here. So we'll go to S3, find our S3 bucket. So just go ahead and open that up. And in here, we can just store any kind of files here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a bucket here. So if I go to create bucket, we can create a new bucket. So we'll just call this uh, photo share and actually we'll just call that photo share and we can leave it there. The first thing I wanna do is give it the bucket name and I wanna make sure that we can have all public access. So we can see this data from a live website. So go ahead and acknowledge it. There are certain security things you should look out for, but for hosting files up for a website, uh, it's okay to just host our photos and upload them publicly. But if you have any super private information, make sure that that's not uh, public right there. So let's go ahead and go in here, leave everything by default. So I can just leave this and let's go ahead and create the bucket itself. So looks like somebody's already created the bucket called photo share. So we'll just do photo share and then dash bucket. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we created the bucket and we have it down here. So let's go ahead and find it. So photo share, let's see, where was that? Photo share bucket. So right now you'll notice you have this, uh, we have this right here that says objects can be public. So we're allowing that, but we still need to add in some permissions to really allow those objects to be public. So it means that we're prepped for them to be public, but we still need to add in uh, let's see if we go to properties here or permissions. We need to add in a bucket policy that allows our objects to have a uh, read option. So that means users can view the objects or the photos or any kind of files we have in this bucket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a policy from a different bucket here. So I'll just grab one here and uh, I'll link it up in the source code. So you can just go ahead and take it. There's a bucket policy generator that we can use. So let's see, I'll just go to another bucket. We'll go into permissions here. And we wanna take this policy right here. So let's just take that. Um, I'll leave that in the GitHub repo. Then let's go back into our photo share bucket. So let's see, photo share. So photo share bucket, we'll go into permissions. And let's go ahead and paste that in here. So there's a bucket policy generator we can use that can set all these, but for now we're just, we'll just paste this in here. So we're just saying allow public read. Let's go ahead and allow users to get data. So that means they can send get requests and we need to add in the bucket name. So for resources, leave all of this, leave this closing forward slash and that right there. And we'll just say photo share. So the bucket name, so photo share, and let's go ahead and save that. So this is gonna allow all the objects to be public permanently in this bucket. So now we're seeing this alert is just saying that, hey, don't put any super sensitive data in here. We wanna make sure to get that alert and know if a bucket's public or not. So now that we have a bucket, we need to access this bucket from our application. So we wanna be able to upload uh, data into this bucket, access it, and just make certain requests to that. So let's go ahead and find that. I'll just do photo share so we can find that easier. So here's our bucket, but to, in order to access it from our application, we need a user to be able to actually be authenticated for this. So I'm gonna delete this bucket right after this video, so I'm not worried about you seeing certain access keys, but let's go ahead and go into our services again. So we'll go back here, and what I'm looking for is my I am user. So this is basically a user to your AWS account, and you can have different users that have different level of permissions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new user. So go in here, we're gonna add in a new user, and we're gonna give this user the ability to access our bucket. So We'll just say uh, Dennis dash photo share. So that's a user for our photo share bucket. I'll go ahead and add it. We'll give this user programmatic access. So go ahead and set that. Go to next here and the bucket policy. Let's see. So we want to do S3. So we just want to search different policies and we want to select Amazon S3 full access. So go ahead and select that. So the user has full permission to this bucket. Let's go ahead and continue here. We don't need anything here. And 
Now we have our user or we're about to create it. We see the access level and let's go ahead and hit create user. So now that we have our user, we see the user, we see the access key, we see the secret key. I'm gonna show you this information and then I'll delete the user, but let's go ahead and go into our application and configure our application to actually uh, access this. So this is why we need a user. I'll leave this page open here. So let's go into our application now. So we'll go in here, we'll close out everything and we'll go into views.py. So we'll go into, not views, but into settings.py. So in settings.py, right now our data is configured to upload into my static files right here. So we're just gonna change this and the first thing we need to do is we need a third party module to actually interact with our bucket. So with this, we wanna install something called uh, Django storages and Bodo3. So let's just do pip install. So pip install and we'll do Bodo3 and I'll pull up the documentation in a second. So we have Bodo3 and then pip install storages. So I believe that's Django dash storages. Okay, so we have Django storages, we have Bodo3. So let's look that up. We'll just do Django storages. Okay, so Django storages, here's a package here and it tells us how to work with uh, different types of options. We're gonna select the AWS S3 option. So you can see it's pip install Django storages. And then to actually configure it, go to Amazon S3. And here are all the things we need to configure to actually connect to our AWS account. And then we have uh, Bodo3, so Bodo3 AWS or Django. So storages needs Bodo3, so we need to make sure we have this too, and it pretty much gives us the same setup and what we need to do to actually access it. So there's a lot of these different variables and parameters that we need to add, or there's a few that we need to add, and then a lot are optional. So let's go ahead and add these in. So we have that installed, we have storages, Bodo3. I'm gonna turn on my server. So we turn on our server, and the first thing we need to do is add in storages to our installed apps. So we'll just do storages. So we added that and now we can use that. So let's go down here underneath our static files. And the first thing I wanna do here is configure my bucket here. So we'll just do default and let's actually look this up. So I'm just gonna go in to storages here. So I'll close out Bodo3 and let's look that up. So default file storage. So we need to set it to this value right here. And this just tells us that we're gonna use Bodo3 and storages to connect to a bucket here. So all I'm gonna do is paste that in, default file storage, that's storages, backends, S3, and then Bodo3 storage. Now after that, I'm gonna go in here again, so I wanna go to the documentation. Let's go ahead and look up our access key ID. So we'll just do AWS underscore, actually let's do control F, AWS underscore access key ID. So this is the Amazon access key and then or the access key right here and then your ID. So this is for that user we just created. So let's take this right here. We'll paste this underneath. So AWS access key and let's go ahead and get AWS secret key. So we'll paste these in here and we wanna set these values. So I'm gonna delete this after this video but here is our access key. So we'll copy that. I can go ahead and add that in right here as a string value and then I wanna go ahead and get my secret key. So I'm gonna copy that right there and let's go ahead and paste this in. So we don't wanna show this, normally you'd wanna store this in environment variables. Make sure this is hidden when you're going to production, but here we go. So we're letting it know that we're using storages. We have our bucket. And then the last one we need is gonna be the actual bucket name. So we have the user. Now this user has permission to access any bucket in our database, right? So what we need to do here is go into AWS and then this is gonna be storage. So we have storage, I don't know why it's not finding it. Okay, so here we go. So AWS storage bucket name. So let's go ahead and add this value in here. And this is gonna be the name of the bucket. So what did I call this bucket here? So the bucket name itself, if I go to S3 again, we'll go back to our buckets. And what I wanna do is find the bucket here. So this is gonna be photo bucket share. And that's the name of the bucket. So we wanna tell it to get this bucket. So this user right here, this user with all these credentials, I'll create the spacing here. This user has access to this bucket. 
So we're just telling Django, hey, now we want to upload it to an AWS S3 bucket. Now, the last thing I want to do is add in something called AWS underscore query and then so query string and then underscore auth. So we need to add this to let it know that we don't want to add in extra parameters to our URL for our bucket items. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So let's go ahead and save that and I actually want to paste that. Let's see, I'll just paste that at the top here. So let's see what happens now. So we have our bucket, we're connected and false needs to be like that, so false. So let's save it and test this out. So we have our bucket, we see there's nothing in here. So I'm gonna close out Bootstrap, we'll close out all of these pictures and let's go into our gallery right here. So I wanna add in a new photo. Let me turn on my server. Okay, so run server, and it looks like we have this alert. So let's just go ahead and look up AWS default ACL. So I remember seeing this, I just can't remember what it was. So let's just do AWS default ACL. So optional default none, which means that the file will inherit the bucket's permission. So it looks like I don't need to set that then if it's telling me that. So it's just a warning, I'm gonna leave it here. So if we look at our application, Right now, we just told Django that we wanna serve our images from our AWS S3 bucket. So that means that these images, if I look into them, they're looking into the bucket now and not into my static files. So what I could do is I can go ahead and go into static here. Let's see, so let's actually just try this. I wanna show you how this works. So we'll go into our bucket and let's go ahead and upload one of these images here. So we'll go into photos. So photo share, this is my project. We'll go into static. And let's just grab this picture right here. So we'll take in family, or family five here, so that's the name of the image. And I'll go in here, so we'll just go into upload, and we're gonna upload this picture. And let's see, so in here, we'll just do add files. So I'll go into family five, open that up, and let's go ahead and upload that file. So if I close this out right now, Django right now is looking for the file on AWS S3 bucket. So it's looking for this path. So if I go to this file, you can see this link S3, S3 object, photo share bucket, and then the bucket name. So if I refresh this, one of these should be that file. So I guess the name wasn't renamed. So let's just try this really quick. So let's go back into uh, our admin panel. Let's just update that. So let's just do forward slash admin. Let's go to photos and maybe this should be changed right here. So let's go to travel nature three, that was a picture. So nature three, save that. Okay, so if I refresh this, nature three is updated. So it looks like when I uploaded this picture right here, for some reason the file path wasn't correct here. So what happened here, if I go back to my bucket, we can see nature three right here. So we went in here, we uploaded it, so when we added that inside of our admin panel, let's see. So we went in here, I'll close out storages. We added that image. So when we hit submit, instead of going into my root right here, the static root or the, let's see, the media root, instead of going in here, because of these configurations, Django uses this user information. It accesses that bucket, uploads it to AWS, and now all of our images are stored up here. So let's go ahead and remove some images and we'll just add them by hand again. So we'll go into photos, we'll just remove everything. So the images are still up on AWS S3, but we're just gonna have to reset it. So we have no photos right now. We'll go in here and I just realized the styling for that link looks kind of ugly. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. So in photos and template, we'll go into gallery and we'll go into style right here. And what I'm going to do is just get the list group item. So list group dash item. And that was list dash group. So that's just a class on each link right here. So if I look right here, list group item, we're just going to grab each link right here and we'll just set list style. That's going to be none. So that's going to remove the underline and then uh, color. We'll just set that to black. So we'll just do color and I'll set that to black here. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and that should fix that. Okay, so the styling looks better and that's not list style, but text decoration. So text dash decoration. Okay, so there we go. So let's add in some new photos. So I'm gonna go in here. Let's just paste in some lorem ipsum here. So we'll just do 
lorem ipsum. Let's grab that. Copy this right here and let's add in a photo. So we're not using the admin panel, now we're using this. So we'll add in the description. We'll set travel here. Uh, we don't need to create a new category. So let's go into travel. And let's set the first one. So we'll create one for travel. Okay, so now travel should be uploaded here. So we uploaded it to the bucket and that looks good. So if I look at the image, the image link here, so we'll just do, let's see, open image and new tab. We can see that this is pointing to that S3 bucket. So if I deploy this anywhere publicly, the Amazon Web Services is gonna, or the Amazon Web Services, so the S3 bucket is what's serving this. So for the rest of the video, all I'm gonna do really quickly is just add in some pictures and that's it for the actual tutorial. So that's the entire application. We have all of our search functionality. We have our add photo option and we're uploading this to S3 bucket. So I hope you learned some styling, maybe how to use Bootstrap and how to connect all this. So let's go ahead and just finish this up. So we'll just go to travel here. Let's see, we'll just, Add in this picture from New York here. This is a trip that my wife took last year. That's in travel. And we already have that, so let's submit it. Okay, so I guess it didn't upload it. So travel, and then I wanna upload some pictures of me and my wife. So this is a personal album for me. We'll go into Silamita and Dennis. Let's see, so let's go back to photos. So we have photos, and I like this picture. We'll save that. There's another picture from Greece that I really like, so I wanna add in the description. Go to travel, and we'll just do this one right here. So this is probably my favorite one actually from Greece. So if I view that, I wanna make sure the sizing looks good. Okay, so that picture was uploaded. So let's go in here. We can see the picture here, and that's from a beautiful place in Greece. And that's gonna be it for now. So we have our search functionality. We have no photos of food here. If we go to travel, we go to Salamith and Dennis. Okay, so everything's looking good. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I do have my uh, my Udemy course out on React and Django. So if you go to buildproshop.com, I'll definitely recommend checking this one out. So this is a website, it's a fully functional e-commerce website with Django and React. If you wanna find that on Udemy, click on this link right here, and it is a paid course. So I hope you check that out. I hope you like this tutorial. I'll see you guys in another video.